The Titans' opponent today, the Kansas City Chiefs, they're one of the most athletic teams in the NFL. Win, win every snap. Everything you got, give me everything you got. Let's go, bring it up, man. Let's go, win on three, one, two, three. Win. Titans trail by five. Snap is low. Colt put in trouble, and he throws it away. Incomplete. Firing over the middle. There's Berkshire. 30 seconds to go. Tannehill looking, looking, firing over the middle. Caught. Humphreys five. Humphreys end zone. Touchdown, Titans. Titans must go for two. Tannehill keeping around right end, driving. He's in. Two for Tennessee. Butcher made a game winner last week to send it into overtime. Snap, set, block, block. It's been picked up by Sims. It's blocked by Kalu. Joshua Kalu. Joshua Kalu. All these cameras, they didn't come here to see. Nah, no, 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 no. But we told you, but we told you after the game, they were gonna be talking about the Titans. We welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. A thrilling salute to service day at Nissan Stadium. Mike Vrabel, your chance to stand in front of those men after that game. I know you were very proud. Sure. Was proud of the whole team. The, the, uh, the finish uh, that we um, showed throughout the game to, to make sure that we played every snap um, with everything that we had. And I think the guys did that. I think we, we stayed into it situationally. Um, and it wasn't always perfect. It's never going to be. But the guys understood what we needed and, and being able to apply pressure to them just with our field goal block unit and and Ryan and the offense operating with a with a urgency and being able to go on the ball and execute those plays uh, in the most critical situation was um, was fun to see and and we're going to need some more of that. Let's take a look at some of the best plays from the victory. It's Mike Vrabel's <clears throat> six pack Titans down 10 nothing in the second quarter and it's time to go deep to Khalif Raymond. Yep, the uh, Holy Roller from uh, Holy Cross. So, you know, we, we got AJ going across there. The post safety cuts him. You know, Khalif's able to stay on top. Ryan gives him a great football. Uh, they, they ruled him, you know, that he wasn't down. They ruled it a touchdown. Obviously, we saw that, it, you know, his hand hit him. But, you know, he's taking advantage. Khalif's taking advantage of his opportunity since he's come up from the practice squad. And, you know, that, that's always great to see when guys take advantage of their opportunities. Ends up going for 52 yards just a couple plays later. The Titans are able to get a touchdown on what is a play from the nine-yard line where Tannehill gets a block and makes a great throw. Yeah, and I think that's the, the effect that Derrick Henry has down there in the, in the red zone. It's a play-action pass. Um, Derrick's able to take the, you know, you know, the fake from Ryan, you know, get in there, uh, block the end. Ryan's got a couple options. He's got Prue crossing and then and then Ferk there and, and running a deep slant. Good job catching the football in traffic and, and, and certainly a huge touchdown for us. Third quarter, Titans are down 19 to 13. Derrick Henry catches a five yard pass and on second and five, Henry takes it the rest of the way. Yeah, you mentioned the five yard pass. That was a positive gain, second and five. And, and to be able to hit these big ones, you know, you need to have receivers that are going to be willing to block. And you saw Tajay there. And I don't know if we caught AJ, but they both got extra effort blocks. You know, the line does their job. Everybody gets them running. Derek's able to put his foot in the ground and uh, and get vertical. But you're going to see those guys finishing. Tajay, you know, there's the post safety. You make him miss. And then Tajay and AJ doing their job on the corners. Conklin with a block. Davis with a block. Pruitt with a block. And Henry, when he gets in the open field, he knows exactly what to do. Yep, and he, he can run. And, and we have to get him get him into that fourth or fifth step, and, and then take our chances from there. Move right to the end. It's 32-27, Kansas City in front. We're in the final 90 seconds of the ball game. Third and two, Titans must get them off the field and do. Yeah, we kind of dropped a, you know, a few more than what they were expecting. Um, Rashawn does a great job of triggering on the quarterback play extension. Um, 
to, to force them to, to sit down. But we, we well-called, uh, well-executed play. That brings up the fourth down, the errant snap, if that's what you want to call it, an, an aborted kick. Titans take over after the grounding penalty at their own 39. Three plays later, Titans have the lead. Yep, Ryan scrambles, and then he also gets the FERC, a huge play. The middle field was open, and he comes back, and with the clock running, is able to get a great call um, to Humph. He runs a great route. It gives the guy a little something at the top of the route. A really good ball, good pass protection. You know, and then Hump finding the end zone uh, for an unbelievable play. And, you know, just the excitement that everybody has. Perk with a little hug right there. Adam's only catch of the day just shows they what made a, it count. Yeah, just shows what a pro he is staying in it, staying alive all the time. Sure, we didn't have a lot of ops, and that's the thing. I think that's the, the, the message to the guys is, is when you outgain uh, the Kansas City Chiefs uh, per play, you have to run more plays. We have to run more plays and be – you know, mindful of what the penalties do to us and, and our ability to convert uh, third downs. Now, every Titans fan has seen this play several times. Let's show it one more time. Three seconds to go, 35-32, Chiefs going for a 52-yard field You know, goal. great anticipation, and, and I, you know, there's a lot of, you know, people saying that he's offsides. I think that that's a great anticipation, great get off. He's moving uh, just after the football moves, and I don't think anybody else was really even ready for the snap except Josh, and, and Josh was – that, that's well coached and that's well executed by the player. I know that that Alk and Eddie spent a lot of time with Josh because of his length and his speed. He chops the inside and chops the arm down to the tight end, reaches with his far arm on his fifth step, and uh, that's exactly how you draw him up. And you really work on the fact that he reaches with that left arm. Yeah, it's the longer arm. I think it's the far arm and, you know, go into the physics of it, but he's not going to be able to bend the corner if he reaches with his inside arm and you know, by reaching with a far arm, it, it pulls his body around, and, uh, and, and he made a fantastic play. There was so much to see at Nissan Stadium in the Titans' three-point victory. There was so much to see around the game. Salute to service. Nobody does it better than the Tennessee Titans at Nissan Stadium. As we get our first break, let's take a look at some of the pageantry of the day from 48 hours ago. Later in this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show, Amy Wells sits down with quarterback Ryan Tannehill. That's coming up. But first, the Bridgestone clutch performance of the game. Fourth quarter, Adoree Jackson makes a really super play on a deep ball, Coach. He does. And, uh, you know, they, we put our fastest on their fastest, and, you know, he finished. I felt like he was competitive. And, and again, it wasn't perfect. But, but any time you target a guy like, like Tyreek Hill, um, you're going to need your best efforts, and there's tight coverage. Um, being able to play down the field on a double move without fouling them, going up through the pocket, and I thought that was uh, a fantastic play. Adore Jackson finishes the ball game with seven tackles. He fought all day long. Yeah. It was almost Malcolm Butler esque. Sure, and I think that that's what that allows you the competitive spirit out there. You know, if you, and I told him if you can run with him and you can get downfield and, and compete. You know, you can do it with anybody. And so hopefully uh, this allows them to play with a lot of confidence and, um, and we can see a lot of good things continue with, with the Dory. Several big efforts in the secondary. LaShawn Sims, 12 tackles. Logan Ryan, 13 tackles. Kenny Vaccaro, nine tackles. Kevin Byard, six tackles. Those guys played a lot of plays and they played hard. They did. They played a lot of man coverage. Again, sometimes his own stuff. Um, we weren't having as much success. And, you know, we, we collectively have to do a better job, but we understand the amount of speed that they had over there. You know, Mahomes was drifting in the pocket back five, six yards, um, throwing some, some really impressive, you know, passes off his back foot, running up into the pocket, jump passing uh, to Hardman. And again, that's, uh, that's the NFL. You know, there's great athletes, and, and our guys hung in there, and we got the stops uh, when we needed them. When we come back, Amy Wells joins us to talk with Ryan Tannehill, the Titans quarterback, 
as we go to break another look at salute to service from Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Stay tuned. The Mike Vrabel Show continues on this Tuesday night as it's time for our Geico Gladiator of the Game. He threw for 181 yards and a couple of scores. He rushed for 37 yards and he ran for a very important two point conversion. Of course, I'm talking about Ryan Tannehill, the Titans starting quarterback. He's standing by with our Amy Wells. Ryan, what a win against the Kansas City Chiefs. Was there a moment when you thought, Forget it. We're winning this thing. After we scored. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, our confidence never wavered. You know, I think uh, we were in a tough spot down, I think, nine in the fourth quarter. But on the sideline, our confidence didn't waver. We had a lot of belief that we're going to find a way to win. And I think over the past three games here, you know, we found a way to win. It's been ugly at times, but our guys keep battling. And if you can find a way to win, especially at home in the fourth quarter, you're going to put yourself in a good situation. Going into this game, there was a lot of talk about the Chiefs and their high-powered offense. Should there be more conversation about the Titans and their high-powered offense? I don't think it matters to us. You know, we just want to go out and play football. We knew coming in that all the hype was on the Chiefs, and, and that's all right. You know, we, uh, we have a lot of respect. You know, obviously, it's a very talented team, high-powered offense, you know, obviously MVP quarterback and a ton of speed on the outside. But uh, our guys believe in each other, and we knew we were going to come out with a win. You know, just that belief that we have that no matter what happens, we'll find a way to win. Do you like being the underdog in this situation? I don't know. I don't know if it matters, but I think as long as there's belief in the locker room, the guys in the locker room believe in each other and expect to go out and win, it doesn't really matter what the outside thinks. Being able to get those results and have everyone be on the same page working together and get the win, is this kind of a defining moment for this Titans offense that, hey, this really works. We can actually do these things. Yeah, I think we have a lot of confidence in each other. Obviously, a big team win every every side of the ball made big plays, special teams there at the end, defense keeping us in it and uh, holding them to field goals in critical situations. So really it took the whole team. But like I said, I think the confidence in the entire team that we're going to find a way to win. It may not be pretty. Uh, things may not be going our way the whole game, but as long as we're in it in the fourth quarter, we'll find a way to win. For you personally, are there certain games that you get up for a little bit more, like maybe playing against the Kansas City Chiefs? I don't think so. I love competing. I love playing football no matter no matter who we're playing against. You know, every opportunity I get to go out and play play with the guys around me is uh, is a ton of fun and, and look forward to it every week. Ryan Tannehill has thrown the ball very, very well since taking over as the Titans starting quarterback. The last two games he's run it very well and his running was key in your comeback in the fourth quarter. It was. It was huge. He scrambled, um, you know, early on in the fourth quarter on a big third down. A lot of great efforts. Uh, by guys trying to fight to get him through. There was contact around the sticks, and, and he was able to get there and get it. And you're going to see that right now. You know, here's, here's the two minute where he goes down and he's able to get his 21 yards or 19 yards. Um, it, it's opportunistic. He's very athletic. I mean, he was a, he was a receiver in college. Um, you know, this is a huge conversion here. Guys are hustling in to get extra blocks. You know, he's making these guys move. We run a zone read, they dive down there on Derek, and we take seven yards. And, uh, you know, he, he's aggressive with the football and it's opportunistic. We get down there and we're able to use him for a two point conversion to give us some options, to give the quarterback some options to to hand it to Derek, you know, to throw, to run. And I mean, he stays on his feet I mean, he takes a heck of a hit. And, I mean, this is he's competing out there. And I think that every time you do this, you gain the respect of your teammates, Mike. That's a pretty good size safety one Thornhill that he ran into right there not to be denied. Guys like to see their quarterback do that too. They do and and, and he's just as much invested uh, in them as, as they are the offense and, and Ryan and you know he, he was in a tough spot. I mean he came in as, as a backup and you know has now have an opportunity to to lead our football team and I think he's you know, like a lot of guys he's taking advantage of the opportunity and and he's, and he's trying to lead and he's trying to get on the same page with these guys. All right, let's take a look now at the Delta Dental Guess the Titan. We are to that, Not part, of that the part of the show. Mike Vrabel, four of eight on the year guessing the Titan. Can he guess this Titan? Man, they smacked the hair right off his head. Do you know? I don't. 
I do. I don't, but we have music coming up now, which means we're going to break, which means you will have just a couple minutes to think about it. Mike Vrabel, take your time and guess carefully. Oh, I know this one. The Mike Vrabel Show continues next. Delta Dental, can you guess this Titan, Mike Vrabel, who is four of eight on the season? Is he soon to be five of nine? I think so. I think this is no other than our lumberjack via Kentucky, Wesley Woodyard, our captain. Wesley Woodyard is correct. You are five of nine on the season. Yes. You have you've been on a roll lately from Sunday to today. Now you're now you're rolling. Yeah, things are into good. the bye. Into the bye. We're rolling into the bye. Let's talk Wesley Woodyard and let's talk about what he means to the football team in terms of leadership, and then when he's asked to play, like he was last Sunday, production. Sure, and I, and I think that you know, what I appreciate about you know Wesley is that there's a there's a role that he was going to have on this team, and he was going to be uh, one of our leaders. He was going to be a, a guy that backed up Jayon and Rashawn at both positions. We felt like we had three starters there. The leadership, um, his ability to carry our message into the locker room with the players, because you can't always have it come from a coach. It can't always come from me or Dean or some of the some of the other coaches. And and he does that. I mean, he he has bought in. He believes in the message and what we're trying to do. Um, and, and then when called upon, he goes in and performs and, and he plays physical. Um, and, he, and he leads guys, and he's been productive. He's going to be successful when his football career finally ends, whenever no, that is. No, no matter what. No matter what he chooses to do, uh, he's a great father. He's a great husband. Uh, he's been a great football player for us, and uh, he'll be successful in whatever he chooses to do after this. When we come back, Coach Mike Vrabel and I will talk about the impact of the fans and how you can help this ball club going forward with Jacksonville on the horizon. The Mike Vrabel Show continues after this. I love this one. Favorite endings all time at Nissan Stadium. Start with one last year. Marcus Mariota to Corey Davis to beat the Eagles in overtime. How about Jake Locker to Justin Hunter to finally beat the Chargers in 2013? Joe Nedney's double mulligan field goal to beat Pittsburgh in the 2003 playoffs. Rob Baronis' bomb from 60 to beat the Colts in 2006. But this is my favorite. November 29, 2009, last play of the game. The 18th play of what would be a 99-yard drive against the defending NFC champion Arizona Cardinals. Young pumping, looking, firing into the back of the end zone. It's caught! It's caught! Kenny Britt! Touchdown, Titans! Touchdown, Titans! Kenny Britt goes high in the air and takes it away with no time on the clock! Wow! Before I go, I want to thank every, every one of those Titans fans that came out today. The ones that decided to come and, uh, and cheer us and, and yell for us and stick around. I appreciate them. Um, and, and hopefully they can bring some people with them um, because I know the guys are going to play their tail off for them. They're going to compete. And uh, it, it's not always pretty, and that's football. But I want to thank the ones that came out here and supported us. It's a powerful moment from your post game on Sunday talking about the performance of the fans. Why did you feel like it was important to give Titans fans at Nissan Stadium a shout out? Well, I understand the commitment that it takes to um, to be a professional sports fan and, and to have a family and try to bring a family and, and, and the, the costs associated with, you know, supporting a team. And I just felt like I wanted to thank, it was a great time to thank those people that, that decided to come, that decided to stay. You know, there were a lot of Chiefs fans there and, and I get that people like to come to Nashville, but I wanted to recognize the ones that came, uh, that cheered, that screamed and yelled and helped us uh, finish that game off. And, and I'm glad that we could reward them with a victory. Um, our guys play hard and they appreciate the support. And you need them in 12 days against Jacksonville. We do. I mean, we're making a huge push right here. We're going to have a bye. 
uh, get mentally and physically prepared and to make this push, to make this final push. And, you know, we want to see as many people out there as we can. Remind everybody that the Titans will play the Jaguars on Sunday, November 24th. That's 12 days. It is a 305 start, 305 at Nissan Stadium. To get your tickets, go to titansonline.com slash tickets. Good tickets still available. Need you in the stadium. Kind of owe Jacksonville. Absolutely. You know, we got to get going. We're going to need everybody, and uh, you know, it'd be a great way to, uh, to start off this uh, second season here after this bye. Enjoy the bye. Thank you. You deserve the rest. Appreciate it, Mike. All right. For Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Mike Vrabel Show.